amazing. Hello. One. Cool. Ah. We are waiting for you, Liam. Perfect. Amazing. Hello, Alexandra. Hello, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Yes. I'm just trying to figure out how I can remove the one second. One second. Okay. Okay, so I have okay, perfect. Amazing. I think we can start. My phone hopefully will not fall again. Uh, okay, so welcome everyone um, to our live today, which we announced will be about boundaries in the corporate environment. But I think it might come. Up. There might be other topics that will that will seep into this. Uh, I'm joined by Yulia, a dear friend and a colleague therapist. Um, she's a UKCP trainee member and integrative therapist. Uh, but she has also worked for a long time in the corporate environment. And um, I uh, am Alex. Um, as you may know, I am a scientist and I work mostly in corporate science, actually. Um, I mean, rather than academic, it would be now more corporate. And I'm also a trainee therapist. Um, so I want to start with uh, just asking Julia to say something about herself so that we can get the feel of her and uh, then we can go into answering one of the questions we, we got for the live. Thank you very much, Alexandra, for, uh, for the invitation. Uh, I must say that I am listening to your podcast for, for a while. You are doing an amazing job. Uh, I didn't understand all the podcasts because uh, I think they're not all in, on, in English, but uh, you are doing a fantastic um, uh, job so far. Uh, in order to say something about uh, about me to introduce myself, um, I am in private practice for um, about five or five years as a, as a psychotherapist. I am, like you've mentioned, um, <clears throat> an integrative psychotherapist and also a hypnotherapist um, practicing in the in the UK. I've done my uh, my studies in psychology in Romania. I'm originally from from Romania. And I have been working in the corporate environment for uh, about 10 years before my, my, my therapy practice, before my career as a, as a therapist. And when you say corporate environment, just for people to have a little bit of a feel, what was your role? What was, were you managing people and things like that? So yes, uh, I started uh, um, with my first job in uh, university. Uh, I worked in a call center. And then uh, I was a people manager for, for a couple of years uh, in a telecommunication company. And uh, my, last jobs, uh, my last job was, was in finance, so managing financial uh, investments. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm just thinking maybe we should jump in, write the questions. I'm really grateful for the people who sent in the questions. I think they're really good and I'm I really can't wait to unpack them. Uh, and uh, before we jump into answering the questions, I want to invite anyone who is here to send us in uh, more if they want, or if something stimulates you to uh, to write to us as we are speaking, uh, feel free to do so. So, so I will just um, want to start to to talk about boundaries and corporate environment. And maybe uh, what I would like to start with is the corporate environment, uh, because we both have worked in, in, that, uh, in that setting. What does that mean? What does that entail for us as human beings? Uh, and why is corporate so special? So uh, I will ask you first, uh, and then I also give my take uh, on it. 
So uh, when I'm thinking of, of boundaries, and um, I'm not going to refer initially to the boundaries within the corporate environment, I'm going to... Um, I think I'm going to define boundaries. Um, what do they mean at the, the personal level? And um, a, quite an interesting example would be to think about boundaries at a personal level. Like we think, uh, I don't know, to, um, our skin is basically it's a it's a physical it's a physical boundary. I think boundaries were created and formed in, uh, in childhood. So for example, if you had a family with a healthy, um, with a healthy environment where uh, the environment was um, suitable for you to develop as, um, as an individual, as a unique individual, when you are an adult, you won't struggle that much in terms of knowing what are your boundaries, where do you need to raise your boundaries. In the opposite will be if you didn't have a healthy family environment, it's quite challenging as an adult to, to manage to navigate um, uh, personal challenges and of course professional, uh, professional challenges because we are referring to, to the corporate um, environment. I think boundaries, um, yes, we create those boundaries in childhood, but also without putting pressure it's our responsibility as adults to to maintain those boundaries and to be consistent with uh, what we with the things that we like and don't like um, when it comes to interacting with uh, with other people so it's important to maintain those boundaries as well mm -hmm. and i just want to add on that because i was a person that never understood boundaries i was like boundary what's that and it was so hard for me to grasp the concept but then as i was reading what you wrote to me around boundaries it, it kind of dawned on me and actually one of my friends who is a therapist uh and, and kind of also a boundary expert a little bit uh dunya she she once taught me that boundaries are relational and boundaries should not be a fortress that we build um, but boundaries are basically something that we adjust every moment anew so boundaries is not something we need to think of and then keep it rigid always with everyone uh, boundaries are really being able to sense oneself in the moment noticing what we need and speaking from the that truth so boundaries are actually really much connected in my opinion to being able to speak one's truth i don't know what you think yeah. about that yeah I, I i agree and indeed we uh, double check our boundaries in interaction with uh, with other pe people because it's um, I, I see it like a circle, so the boundaries represent the circle and the space outside the circle is basically the, the interactions with, or like the, the interactions that we don't want to have, like the boundaries that we don't want to be crossed by people. And it's also, you mentioned cultural boundaries, uh -huh. uh, your topic. I think it's so important to, to be able to see the difference um, when we're talking about cultural boundaries because sometimes we might be mean or be perceived rude in relationship to, to other people but it might not be something that we intend to do it it's just like we don't know not necessarily ignorance but not not knowing that we might affect and or we might impact the other person so i think it's it's quite important and in my previous career and in my current career it's quite important to understand where is that person coming from because we need to be mindful of the of the, of the differences cultural differences especially in corporate it's so important diversity inclusion it's it's vital yeah, yeah and 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 coming to the diversity and inclusion and and boundaries i think what we may be lacking in corporate environments is the ability to check in with others. Uh, and I think with boundaries, it's not about like, this is where I am, this is a boundary, but I think it's all about, I feel something's happening for me, but I still have the ability to check in with you. Is this your intention? Is this what you want to say? And I think 
uh, when when we think of, about boundaries or when people talk about boundaries, I think it's often there is this idea of uh, it's only about me. But often it is, as I mentioned in the beginning, it's, it's quite relational. I kind of want to transition a little bit about uh, the corporate because I wrote to you that corporate environment is a human environment. So in a corporate environment, you don't expect anything more than what we expect in any other environment because it's still a human endeavor. So maybe we also want to talk a little bit. Uh, we, we both have this experience that there are really great stuff that you can do in a corporate setting. And corporate has a bit of a, a bad reputation. But I think corporate uh, can achieve some really great feats because it has the infrastructure to deal with complex problems, which cannot be solved in small companies, in startups, uh, in, in private endeavors. So maybe you want to say your experience about the good sides of corporate, and then we can also or talk about the, the challenges as well. Yeah, so working in corporate, and I think I was really lucky. So I worked in a company where there was, um, the focus was a lot on mental health, and I, I saw the difference, especially um, during the, the um, pandemic, so after, during and after, after, after COVID. And what I've noticed whilst uh, working with, uh, with clients and reading the literature, there are loads of companies at the moment. Thank you. <laughs> Good. There are loads of companies at the moment who are doing amazing things when it comes to, when it comes to promoting mental health and talking about boundaries and uh, making sure they provide their employees the, the right tools. To, to be efficient uh, at the professional and at the personal level. So, for example, what I've noticed an increase, um, most big corporation, big companies are investing a lot in, in education. And when I'm saying investing a lot in education, I'm not saying necessarily there's no expectations for, uh, I don't know, managers to become a therapist, but uh, they are providing trainings where they can teach managers, senior executives, how to communicate better, how to empathize better with, uh, with, with their teams and how to listen and to understand that there is no one size fits all solution. So that's, that's been amazing to notice. Um, there's uh, this awareness that, that's happening at the moment. And also, from my experience uh, whilst working in corporate, uh, providing support and uh, providing support and talking about it, because there are loads of um, companies where they have uh, programs, more mental health, HR, employee system programs, and maybe their employees don't know about it. And talking openly about it and not being so confidential people can access the resources that are available within, within, within the bigger company. So I've noticed this shift towards a positive, uh, like a, towards a better, better road when we're talking about, uh, about corporations. And I think it's... So for now, I'm not hearing you. Are you there? Can you just... yeah. yeah, okay. I, I got the phone call in that's fine. Okay. Um, apologies, I don't know how to, to turn it off. So I've noticed that also uh, the, uh, the executives, the CEOs are, uh, are emphasizing the importance of uh, mental health because indeed change happens from, from the top to the bottom, but they need also the, um, the employees to, to, to be engaged in and to contribute to, to that uh, mental health awareness. So I, I, from my experience, I've seen an improvement. Of course, there's, there's a lot of other things that uh, could be done in order to ensure that uh, um, going to work and being in a work environment is as, as healthy as, as possible for, for everyone, for customers, clients, and for, for employees in the same time. And I want to also touch upon there was one question uh, about should I adapt my personality based on who I communicate with 
And I was just wondering, because you did say something about that in, in some of your answers just now, and maybe you want to expand on that, and then I will discuss a little bit. I even have a picture here. I don't know. I think people will be able to see it. Yeah. So the Johari window. So I will I will show it later, but when you when you talk a little bit about yeah i think um uh, there was uh, so th this is a different question not the one with the promotion so someone else asked yeah should i adapt my personality based on uh, the people that i'm talking to within the company i think it's really important to be mindful of who we are to be mindful of our personality because it's a um, it's it's quite a tricky balance to make sure that we keep our core values and we communicate effectively with um with uh, with the people within uh, within the company, and this shouldn't be like um, like suppressing our own self or being inauthentic. It should be about finding finding that balance to ensure that we can um, adapt based on the the people with whom we are talking without I don't know without feeling that we are. Uh, we are not sincere. It's really important to feel that we are honest, we are sincere, we are authentic whilst uh, whilst engaging with other people. And also to adapt, like everyone talks about effective communication. So yes, we need to communicate effectively. But what is, what is effective communication? Basically understanding that people are different. And if someone, for example, prefers a more, I don't know, simplistic approach and talk a little bit, I don't know, talking more about numbers as an example if we find it in us we can adapt we can we can approach that person differently if someone wants to talk into greater details or prefers i don't know talk more about a specific uh, uh, topic considering the process more we can adapt as well without feeling that we are not uh, we're not we're not authentic so it's really important to to understand that we can be effective and um, we can have an effective communication whilst being true, true to ourselves in the same time. Mm -hmm. And I also just want to add there, uh, there was a the part of the question is, should I adapt my personality? And I guess it's not about adapting the personality as much as it is about knowing, knowing your personality and exploring it and actually um, we are in Gestalt, we talk about selfing, so we talk about how much our personalities and who we are in the moment is actually influenced by all the external influences, so we are always off the environment, off the field, and so I think there is a part about uh, knowing, knowing your source spots so that you can effectively then listen and truly hear the other rather than being reactive so in in, in gestalt we also talk about response ability um so the ability to respond and not to react oh, yeah. um i uh so i guess the next question which kind of relates to this one a little bit and i think there are several ones um about feedback um so <laughs> how do you handle negative feedback or um well about communication so maybe you want to say something about what feedback is for you uh and uh, and then we can expand it further so when we're talking about feedback and an effective communication for for me um when we invite people to to give us feedback and when that feedback is um is shared provided in a warm uh, in a warm warm manner it kind of helps us to get in touch with our feelings it kind of help us to help help us to to be authentic in, in the same time so rather than focusing on the uh, content of the feedback if the feedback is done properly we can be um, open to take in no matter the, the, the context and to take in the information without feeling offended. And it's really important to understand that also like negative feedback, it has the word negative, but it's meant to help us um, to promote growth in a way within ourselves. And it's important, like you said, reacting. So it's important not to react straight away. It's important not to, to take those words 
to like from the first instance to to reflect uh, reflect a little bit on it and to take i don't know perhaps if you can take a day or two like a, a time space where you can think about what was said if it is relevant to you if it is true if it was i don't know the heat of the moment if it was a context it was a project that you perhaps worked on it and i know you weren't great but the project didn't fit your personality and so on so it's to be to find that balance as well because yes it might have the negative connotation but it's not the end of the world so if we're open we can transform that negativity in a way towards something more like stable more balanced for for ourselves especially because it's important yeah and and in my training we actually call call feedback uh talking about growth edges okay. because we all call we all have growth edges and so we can reframe feedback as an opportunity you mentioned this for growth um and and i guess guess in the question of how do i handle negative feedback there is a lot of what you've written in the email which is about a lot of about self-regulation emotional stability giving yourself what you need in order for this information to land in a way that you can then actually use it uh effectively sorry yeah no, no that that's great the, the emotional regulation i think is so 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 important how we how we react and I don't know if um, um, in Gestalt training uh, the focus is as much as uh, it is for us an integrity of approach. It's like the, that connection with, with your body and to be really mindful what's happening for what's happening for you in, in that moment, what's happening within, within your body. So for example, right now we are in this conversation. So what's happening for us, it's, it's a way, it's a conversation, it's a feedback about some, some topics. So what's happening for you, what's happening for, for me? For me, I know what's happening, I don't know, I can't see the screen properly, I have like a, like a notification. So what's happening? This is what happened, there's a discomfort. There is a feedback coming from my phone in a way. There's a, 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 an information, but I am grounded. I am here. I am comfortable. I have my water, so I am okay to take in what's happening in the present moment. So that's the, like an interesting creative approach to, to feedback, no matter how painful it is. Yeah, I really actually really like that because we uh, it's interesting that people only think of feedback as something when it happens in, in a very specific setting, but feedback is every interaction. Yeah. And maybe taking a little bit, a little bit of the edge of that, like now this is feedback that you need to act upon and this is not, whereas every interaction you have with your boss, with your colleague is a feedback interaction. You do get some information about them. Yeah, yeah. And I think... Uh, it's also about yeah it's a feedback it's something about so for example like work in corporate it's something about the things that you've done it's about your job it's not necessarily about you as a human being it's not necessarily about who you are it's one side of your i don't know persona like we play different roles it's about a role within your life it has nothing to do with your role as a partner, as a wife, as a mother, as a sister, and so on. It's about a specific in in your life. So if we can manage to 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 do that distinction, to have that distinction, I think we could uh, could understand feedback a little bit better. Because it's like in therapy as well. There's the feedback about you as a therapist, and there's the feedback about you as a person such a fine line to make the distinction so it's um to be mindful and open to see those differences it's, uh, i think it works yeah i'm just looking i just want to mention briefly the johari window because i i think it's kind of a useful concept and i will just go quickly to it it's like has this four i will i will just show it here but it has these four squares and so there are the known knowns, there are the known unknowns. So the known knowns are everything that everyone else can see about us. The known unknowns are basically everything that we keep private. So it's unknown to, to the people we work with, but it's known to us. But I think, so the interesting part is that the feedback happens where the person that is 
seeing us knows something about us, but we don't know that. And that's the opportunity for feedback. That is the opportunity for growth. And here, the more we share the, uh, the stuff that the person doesn't know about us, that's the opportunity for trust. And I think in, in corporate environments, I really like this, because in corporate environments, we need to build both. And people forget that the trust is the basis for giving good feedback. Um, because we think that we should just deliver feedback regardless of what's our relationship to the person. But in order to give good quality feedback, that person needs to trust that we want them best. So we need to open both of these windows. We are pushing them both a little bit, a little bit at the same time. I don't know how this lands for you, but I, when I saw it for the first time, it felt really illuminating. Yeah, yeah, it lands uh, in an interesting place because it, it takes me to to the topic of trust. So how do do how do we end up trusting uh, our colleagues, our our manager, and how do we end up trusting the the entire the entire company in a way? Because we need to to be to be mindful of that as well. And like I'm I'm asking the question to myself, and I'm responding in the same time. Like my mind goes. Um, uh, straight away to, to find the solution and I think it's like the trust that you give to yourself to start it to start with like do you trust yourself that you will gonna be okay creating forming a relationship at work with your uh, manager with your colleague do you trust yourself that you can do it do you trust yourself that you can maintain that uh, that work relationship do you trust yourself that you can deliver deadlines and the project that needs to be done and so on? I think it, it stands with us first, trusting yourself. I, I think it's a, it's a difficult job. It's, a, it, it's not as easy as it sounds. It's a, it requires a discipline, openness, empathy, authenticity, integrity to start building that, um, that momentum for, for yourself. And uh, now I want to come to the question of how to um, uh, how to change when there is a change in position, and how to reconfigure the relationship now that you have a new position. And I really loved that question. I thought it was quite thoughtful, and I also loved uh, the answer you sent me in the email. So I'll just give the space to you because I thought it was really good. Uh, yeah, the, the person that asked, uh, I got a promotion, how do I ensure that I uh, I respect my boundaries? First of all, congratulations to the person who got the, the promotion. It's a, it's a, big, uh, it's a big deal. Um, uh, secondly, uh, I will go back a little bit now to boundaries, knowing your boundaries to start with, what you were, where were you, where were you before you took the promotion, before you accepted the uh, uh, the role in terms of boundaries and identify if there were things to improve back then in a, in a way your relationship with your colleagues with your manager customers and and so on so to see exactly where you were at the time of the promotion and um, i think it's important when you take on more responsibilities to uh, not necessarily learn how to say no but to learn how to prioritize your your time and to understand what are the new tasks now that are important for you, for you to perform and for your team to perform and to maintain your, your work relationships uh, say, with the same quality, within the same, the same quality. I think we can talk about resilience as well uh, in this context, because with, uh, with the promotion, with, um, with more responsibilities, you might uh, have not necessarily more stress, but uh, uh, loads of other activities to, to do and uh, new projects, project perhaps, and to understand exactly where is your resilience coming from? How do you deal with, with pressure in a way? How do you deal with, uh, with, with stress and to see your limits and to, to, of course, ask for help because if you got the promotion, especially at the beginning, you want to do everything, uh, I, I don't know, to respect your deadlines, to help everyone to be perceived uh, 
that you are worthy for the promotion it's important to see exactly where you are yes i can do this i can do this or to, to set your um, your limits uh, properly your boundaries properly and also to ensure that you are still maintaining your life work balance because there's that there's that um, like seduction of having a new job a new promotion success more money and so on yes which is great congrats but still maintain your your i don't know your your relationships with your friends your relationship with your par partner not to neglect what we already have at home with our friends just because of that promotion yes it is important it is a great achievement but it needs to the promotion needs to adapt to your to your life in a way and your life needs to adapt to your new responsibility so again the balance between uh, between between this and like talk to your manager to 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 your peers to to ask for help if you need help because you are new you don't know the new the new role also and that's that's i think a really important thing is is not forgetting that you are still within a system that there is support mechanism and to really acquaint yourself with what what does it entail for you to be in that new role and to then communicate again further down well this is my new role and this is now what it entails this means that our relationship is going to change in this in this way um but this we can keep so so it's a lot about taking the time actually to adapt to that new thing rather than expecting that everything will magically solve itself which is where most problems happen yeah. i think yeah mm -hmm. uh, i would like to go to the question that is my favorite question and i kind of kept it to kind of towards the, for the end which is the two questions that came together uh, one of them is how to overcome toxic corporate culture and the other one is how to avoid burnout um so i'm, I'm curious to hear your thoughts about this <clears throat> first of all i think we need to identify what that toxic environment is how how to navigate a toxic environment and to ask yourself the the right the right questions how do you react how what are your triggers when it comes to interacting with uh, with that kind of behavior can you do something about it in in the sense i don't know can you change things can you adjust things in you so you learn how to uh, re you learn how to do the emotional regulation so it doesn't affect your um, your body and also like consider like is it the right is it the right thing for me at the moment is it was it the right decision to to be part of of the of this um, company and i think we can easily identify that and i know it sounds a little bit poetic and quite idealistic in the same time but our body would, will always tell us if we are in the right place our body will communicate to us if this is the right context if this is the right environment for me to develop as a human being to develop as a as a professional and so on so always it's important not to ignore our um, our physical reactions and like i don't know have a look uh, if it is like a um like an open floor have a look at uh, how everyone interacts have a look at their bad bo body language have a look how i don't know they are engaging in conversation they are going for 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 coffees are they open to raise i don't know problems or like have a look at the bigger at the bigger picture as well to identify if that's um if, 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 how toxic it is basically if that's the 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 problem and also like you met in, in that question was mentioned also burnout burnout is not a medical diagnosis for, first of all and i think it's so important to be mindful of the um, how we talk about these kind of things because it's a real it's a real struggle for the person who has burnout and we need to be really careful how we use those words in, in mental health especially like you know, depression trauma anxiety burnout because we can invalidate other people who are struggling with it we can't through words like that and yes if you suspect that uh, you are in burnout ask yourself like do you do you struggle 
I don't know, have your um, sleep um, habits have changed? Do you have any physical symptoms that might have been generated from, from, from stress? Are you critical at work with yourself? You're not finding any joy in, in the accomplishments that uh, you realize on a daily basis. Do you struggle to wake up in the morning? Do you struggle to, to go to work? Like, have a look and check with yourself, check, check with your body, check with the professional to ensure where, where, where you are. Because it's really, really difficult to navigate a toxic environment. But it's also important to understand where you are. Like, yes, what's happening? Like, the same thing, what's happening for you? What's happening in your body? And also, I think it's really interesting to, to never, to never. And it's, inter it's important to avoid using I should. I should be enjoying my job. I should be doing that. I should be, um, I don't know, experienced enough to understand. I should, I should. It's important how we use the shoulds, because that, those uh, mandatory conditions that we apply on ourselves will create that, that burnout. And like, ask yourself if a person that you love most in this world would, would struggle like you are struggling, what you would say to that mm -hmm. person? Because we are a little bit kinder to other people than we are to, to, to us sometimes. Well, I just I just read a comment that burnout is a medical diagnosis in Brussels. I didn't okay. know that. No, I didn't and, know that. Uh, the, the comments, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, but I actually I, I want to add something about uh, well first toxic work cultures um, how to overcome I think the question was how to overcome toxic corporate culture I think I think there is a, that's a big brush stroke to say that the all of the corporate culture is toxic that that would be that would be really doing a disservice to the cultures that are really putting some effort in, into making a good working environment um so in that sense i think it's important to uh to notice whether i am in a toxic environment and whether i can do something about that and how to overcome the culture i think uh i think if you truly are in one, you can't. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I must say, I, I don't really believe that if something is deeply, deeply difficult, that there is like a lot of, uh, of, of possibilities there. Uh, but still taking uh, that in mind, I think what, I don't know, uh, I think uh, you, you ask this question so if you want a more a sense of modesty i think you asked this this question so maybe if you have more questions uh, just write them in the chat but uh, there is one thing when it comes to toxic what 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 i thought you said about toxic corporate culture which is this idea of over productivity of how much things need to be done and I don't think that is uh, corporate. I think that is uh, the field we are living in. And I think in a way to overcome that was to, is to really every single person kind of to, to start with themselves and, and start a small revolution inside themselves. Yeah. Uh, like starting to, as you said, speaking to themselves as their best friend. Because I've noticed that often, and I must say I am noticing that more and more, it's not necessarily again my phone, it's not necessarily my boss who puts the pressure, but it's the voices in my head. This should have been done earlier. This how how did you not do this? Why did you take the time off now? So it, it is also part of me. Um uh, and then it, it it kind of thinks about that voice being my boss. So I think I think it's a bit it's a really complex question because first we live in a field where there is a lot of hyper productivity and just go 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 go, uh, which we need to decondition from. <laughs> yep. And I think there is no other way than psychotherapy, not because we are therapists, but because it just takes time to decondition from that. Um, and then I think. And I, what I didn't allow to myself, and I think this is the this is the important thing because I am coming from Serbia. Uh, we always need visas, so it's always like our visas are tied to our jobs. So you don't really have the chance to explore what is the culture you want to work with. Yeah, because yeah. it's a privilege to actually 
go and try something for three months and say this is not for me and then go and try something else for three months and be like no this is not the place i want to be in um so i think there is something about uh, allowing yourself to test the environments that you're going to and then finding a corporate culture that might fit your needs but that requires a privilege that not many people have so uh, I, I kind of understand the question because it's part of the field, but I also want to, to add this. And I want to add uh, just one more thing about burnout. I was listening to a really good podcast about this, and uh, they were saying something about uh, burnout often happens to the best people because they really care about doing their job properly. But, but burnout often happens also uh, when the best people have lost their sense of purpose. And I, it has happened to me. So I know how it is to have to do really hard work without knowing why exactly am I doing it. And often people who work a lot and who are very driven and passionate have no problem doing that as long there is this you know, idea, this is why I'm doing it, this is the next, you know, cancer treatment or like what we were discussing in, in our training. But as soon as that idea why is lost, yeah. we can easily go into a burnout because now it's just hard. <laughs> and I think I think that, that that's something that's, I guess, really important to, to keep in mind and to constantly be in touch with your own purpose uh, so that those hard things do not become a source of of burnout so i don't know if you have anything to add here and if there is any more questions around this i would love to i would love to hear them I, I, what you said about the why that's that's a really interesting topic and i think simon sinek talks uh, uh simon sinek talks a lot about the why behind uh, uh the way and the option that we follow when we choose our career our vocation and so on yeah it's that fire because if we enjoy what we are doing what if we're really really passionate about our job about our vocation we won't feel as as, uh, as tired we won't feel as angry stressed so it's important to, to find the, the the why behind to find what you what you enjoy most and i i I agree it's a privilege it is a privilege so to, to to reach a certain a certain level where you can say yeah I'm doing what what I love I'm doing this out of passion there's a fire in me a fire in me when I go I'll go to work I, I love it yes it is a privilege but it's it's not something that's impossible to achieve yes. like it, it, it's important yeah. to also emphasize the fact that it's not impossible. We can we can find what we love, and if we can't find that in our in our job, we can find hobbies, yeah. things to yeah. do in our spare time. Because we are not our identity is not necessarily only at work. We have plenty of part in ourselves that can be brought um, to to surface. Mm. I really, yeah, I think it's such an important thing to have to emphasize. It, it has happened to me again, that there was a moment where a lot of who I was was tied into my work. And then when that was struggling and crumbling, I could see that I lost my ground. But suddenly in my work of therapy, I started drawing, I started having uh, different kind of interactions. I started studying psychotherapy, which then, although I have more to do, Paradoxically, uh, it's much easier to do the work that was just stressing me because then my life is, is not, my success and, and, and my life value is not tied exclusively in one thing, but is kind of diversified. So if one of those things is suffering, then it's not such a big deal in a way. Yeah, yeah, we are more than our, our, our job. That's, I think it's really important mm -hmm. to do to attach ourselves to, to this idea. We are more than that. We are friends, we are sisters, brothers, husbands, wives. We have so many roles. Yeah. Uh, I'm just looking at the questions. I think there is only maybe one left, which is how to handle rejections in sales and how to not take it personally. And so I don't know if you wanna end up on just 
saying something about rejections and, and then we can slowly wrap up. So rejection, uh, a rejection in sales or rejection on a daily basis, it's not something that it's pleasant. So of course, no one likes being rejected. No one likes hearing that an idea that they had will is rejected by by someone else be it a, a, a friend uh, your partner or a customer or, or your boss so first of all is to connect with that with that feeling it's i know it's really intense it's really difficult but to to understand what is the rejection doing to me in this in this specific moment because it's about the feeling that was associated to that to that to that rejection like if you want to go deeper, like to 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 think of like when was another time when you felt rejected? How did you act it? How you how did you react it? What was the solution back then to to see if you can find some resources within your past that you might bring now in 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 your present to utilize some some of those um, uh, skills, so some of those qualities to bring something back if you have any any space uh, for that and again i'm gonna repeat myself it's the same it's the same thing it was a rejection that had to do with the project of course you've worked for the project you've worked for for that i don't know page and and so on in in sales but it has nothing to do necessarily with you as as an individual it's the specific um, uh, the specific project is that specific deal that you you couldn't uh, you couldn't close. It's not you as as a person, but it's important to to get used to to that uncertainty. It's important to to perhaps see how does that feel on on your body. Where where is it the main impact? When did you felt that way in your in your life and so on? So it's it's a more elaborate. Um, I think it's a more elaborate answer for for this one when it comes to rejection because no one loves to be rejected. We all want to be accepted. We all want to be part of something something bigger than us. Sometimes. I mean, there are two things that I want to add. One is like. I I know it sounds very cheesy, but I still like the 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 the, the sentence rejection is redirection. Um, at least for me, I always I, I see it as something that tells me this is not my place to be. Um, and, and so, in a way, I re I think it's also tied up within what you're saying. Separate the rejection from who you are as a person. Separate, separate, separate. Uh, and the other part I wanted to add, because this was specifically for um, how do you do that in sales. And I think there is something about sales that uh, is quite specific, which I think, uh, at least for me, I have no problem to sell something I deeply believe in. And if I have a deep trust and belief that what I'm selling has value, then I won't be... Uh, won't be so touched by the rejection because someone else doesn't see the value in it mm -hmm. because that for me just says well this person is just not the right fit for what i'm offering but it doesn't say anything about the value of what i'm offering because i already have a deep trust and belief that that value is there and i think there is there is something about checking in what is it that you're selling what is that for and then not noticing that when someone is rejecting that 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 is either you have when you communicated your message properly which is something you can work on or that person just cannot benefit with, from what you have to offer which is completely fine and so i i think that there is something about knowing um that rejection uh, is also about you're just checking it's an invitation or our sales is just an invitation it's not a done deal it's an invitation into your world into the what you are offering so that you can create something together that is bigger than both of you so it's sales as well is a relationship to me and therefore it's it implies as in any in any other relationship is um we will be rejected because we are not likable by everyone and what we offer is not in everyone's taste
yeah yeah that's that's beautifully said and i i, I want to like um finalize and then the, the the this life with uh, like a funny story i, I got a, a job whilst i was in university selling a product over the, over the phone and i i've been i think i've done that that job for a month um i only could do it for a month and i remember how was how it was for me back then to because it was um, um selling a product through 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 through, phone, through a phone call basically and every every night i would go home like because i would work really weird uh, hours different shifts and i was upset crying it was something that back then I couldn't deal with and I've decided okay this is not this is not for me I need to recalibrate I need to to find a different a different job but back then for me it was the solution was to leave I'm, I'm not recommending this to to anyone necessarily to leave but that, those were my resources so back then 15 years ago my resources when it came to rejection because i was rejected constantly it was like okay i'm gonna go this is not my my dream job and i'm happy now that i've done it because the resources that i had i've utilized it we can utilize them in a different field so and it's a fun that's a, i think that's an important story because it also shows us that something what sometimes what we think was a mistake was actually just the space to build the resources that then you can use is something that's bigger and more important for you. Yeah, yeah, the relationship with rejection. Yeah, yeah. So I would slowly like to wrap this up. Uh, I don't know if anyone who has listened has any more questions um, and if you have anything to add. Thank you very 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 much for uh, for your invitation and uh, your input is uh, extremely extremely valuable as, as always and uh, i i will say what i said at the beginning i love your podcast I'm, uh, i i need to to prioritize my time to to make sure that i listen to to all of them because i think you've done a couple of podcasts so far i think over a hundred or yeah. i'm not sure so yeah about hundred keep doing them they are lovely thank you and uh yeah i wanna uh so for people who don't know that but i do want to share i have received this long email with julia's <laughs> thoughts on this topic which i really enjoyed which really kind of was an incredible testimony to to, to your dedication uh and to to how uh important are the people that you want to serve for you uh, and so I just want to acknowledge that. Uh, and um, yeah, so I just want to invite people. So this was very spontaneous, <laughs> but the two of us decided to do a webinar together where you can actually, in a better way, and we can prepare this in a more structured way, interact with us. Uh, and we decided it's going to be on the 27th, but we didn't decide the time. And I'm, I'm thinking is, is seven o'clock or 6.30 okay for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we can we can make it six thirty. So six thirty on the twenty seventh. It will be in the in the notes for for this video. Uh, we will do a probably a one and a half two hour webinar on this topic, which will be a bit more experiential and it will be a bit more interactive. Um, so, so you guys can actually join, really ask your specific questions, and in and interact with us. And in the meantime, if you have any questions, send them over to us. Um, or if you want to work with Yulia or me, so Yulia is a qualified psychotherapist. Uh, I'm currently a coach and soon to be a counselor. So um, yeah, we are here. We are here to support you through whatever you have struggles with and challenges in the corporate environment. And we are happy to to continue doing so. So thank you, Yulia, again. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alexandra. See you soon. Thank you. Bye.